This episode of MMA Notes is brought to you by NordVPN. Get advanced security, internet freedom, and complete privacy. Save 73% off the two year plan plus four months free with code MMA Nuts. Wild Alaskan Company. Healthy, affordable, convenient fish sent right to your door. Save $25 off with code BIGFISH25. X Suit. The world's most comfortable suit. I ordered mine. It fits like a glove, doesn't even need to be altered. Save 10% off with code MMA Nuts. Cleto Rays, the makers of high quality boxing gloves, get free shipping with code MMA Nuts. Defense soap, everyday soaps for everybody. Use code MMA Nuts to save 15% off your order. Hey fans, MMA Nuts, episode 686. 686. My name's Ingo Weigel. Matt Griffith, MMA show by MMA fans, for MMA fans, walk the line between serious. And ridiculous. What's happening? Drinking out of a ball glass. Moonshining it up. <laughs> Little water. The nectar of the gods. <laughs> That's what Ingo drinks. Vodka claims it's water. <laughs> <laughs> That's my water, man. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> water for me, water for you. A little vodka there. Yeah. Uh, do we have to talk about the bears? It's up to you. <laughs> you should. I mean, I think the Bears looked better this week against the Packers, but I got to say, that just sucks to lose on a freaking <laughs> goal at the end. Like, I think we looked way better at, t- at points, but Caleb still has no time. I don't understand how we have all of these athletes and they can't block anybody. doesn't make any sense. I feel like the play calling is terrible, and he's just willing the victory at this point. And that's asking a lot from a rookie quarterback. Well, I mean, I I would say the positives are like the new offensive coordinator since they fired Shane Waldron. Uh, The new guy is making better calls. So we actually scored a fucking touchdown this week, which we haven't done in like fucking two games or something. 43 possession or something. It was something insane, right? (laughs) Yeah, he got the ball out of his hands a hell of a lot quicker. Not as many sacks. Yeah, the line is still pretty porous at times, but they're making some adjustments. And I think at the end of the day, it all goes back to the head coach again. Because he fucked up at the end of the game yet again. Could have tried to get some more yards. He's like, fuck it, we're close enough. Yeah. Why Why aren't you go for it? Because I forget what game was a similar scenario. Maybe it was the Bills and their quarterback fucking ended up running for a touchdown instead of getting like a field goal. You know, you could have just... You had the time. You could have gained a few more yards. And I don't know on those. I, I've always felt like the longer the kick is, the lower the trajectory is yeah. on it. And like the, the closer you are, the higher you can get it. So odds of it getting blocked are pretty high. Uh, From the farther away. back. Yeah. Yep. So why not give yourself five or ten more yards? Try to get a little closer. Like it's just – the season's a fucking disaster, but you could see the talents there. We we should. What are we now? Four and six. Yeah, and we and should be I six said and four. Nine, nine wins. I think it might be eight at this point. Yeah, I said ten. I'm fucking like playoffs. Let's go, motherfuckers. But Matt Eberflus is just trying to fuck us every step of the way. And uh, they should have fired him last year. They better fire him this off season. And the the other thing that was interesting is I hear a lot of people calling for Gruden to be the Bears head coach. I'm hey like, now, oh, I, I like, like this. And uh, the interesting thing was I read some mm-hmm. article that was saying the Bears will not hire an experienced head coach or a coach with balls because there's an ego contest and whoever's in charge of that is afraid of that. So if you look at like the last three head coaches, they're all book fucking beta males, like all pussies. Cause like, of the you, ownership. They, they yeah. Want, yes. They, they don't want someone with like a fucking personality. Like you get fucking Gruden. He, I think he even said he wants to, he do it. Like you need someone that's going to be okay. aggressive, understands oh, yeah fucking football you need someone with experience and we keep hiring people that don't have head coach experience yes like let's try this guy out let's well, try i think we want guy. patsies you know we want the, yes. the control status quo and fuck that we've done the same thing no more so anyway uh, yeah I but i digress <laughs> <laughs> let's do a little okay. sponsor action before we get into the main events here oh uh, you got it fellas 
Do you want your grooming routine to be a one and done deal? Well, the days of using the same trimmer for your face and your private parts are over. Thanks to our friends at Manscaped. You come up with the ultimate package to keep your hair trimmed from 12 to 6. Uh, Introducing yes. the Beard and Balls Bundle featuring Lawnmower 5.0 and the Beard Hedger. A trimmer for the moneymaker and another for the boys downstairs. Get 20% off and free shipping. The code MMANUTS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code MMANUTS at manscaped.com. For the premium grooming experience, trust Manscaped. Nice. First up, your ball's new best friend, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Say goodbye to endless passes. This trimmer gets it right the first time, cutting through the bushiest of bushes effortlessly while being gentle on the skin and your delicate places. And remember to join the 11 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped for all their grooming needs and get the beard and balls bundle today. Get 20% off and free shipping. The code MMA Nuts at manscaped.com. It's 20% off and free shipping. With the code MMA Nuts at manscaped.com. No more juggling multiple tools or dealing with subpar results. Just efficient, effective grooming wherever you need it. That's right. And this episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Does Blue Chew work? If you're asking that question, we want you to know that Blue Chew is putting their money where their mouth is by giving you one month free. What? That's crazy. Blue Chew is a non-unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra at a fraction of the cost in a chewable form. It's a simple process. Sign up at BlueTree.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, prepared and shipped to your door. The best part, it's all done on the internet. No doctor office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. You can take them anytime, day or night. So you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. That's right. And Blue Chew wants men rock hard. They told me that's the mission. They will not stop until every man is bricked up like a brick house, till every tennis pitch, till every rod is raised. Uh, discover your options at bluechew.com. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. You can try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code NUTS at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code NUTS to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Hell yeah. Just like that. Back to the show. Let's talk about the big fight, Ingo. You want to talk about Tyson versus Jake Paul? That's right. Uh, first? Yes. Okay. Well, I have lots of thoughts. A couple things. First of all, Go ahead. let me show you this because this is what they had going on in New York, which I thought was pretty freaking cool. If I can figure out how to share my screen. Here they have. Oh, this is the wrong one. Never nope. mind. Okay. Wrong one. Come back to that later. <laughs> is it the right one? No, I don't it? know. It's your shit. <laughs> Sorry. I'm all messed up over here. It is the right one. Here it is. Okay. Um, here they are. Here's Tyson and Jake Paul. Oh, yeah. Huge blow up dolls. Check that out right there in New York. Down nice. in the city. Pretty nice. Those seem to be like 50 feet tall. They're huge. Like a couple stories, three, four stories at least. That's a good way to promote. And, you know, coming into this fight, the weights, Mike Tyson, 228.4. Jake Paul, 227.2. Mike Tyson, 58. <laughs> Paul, I don't know what he is. He's in his 20s, maybe 27. They said the gate was 18 million, which was a new record for Texas. Yeah, and, they had like 70-some thousand fans in attendance, right? Yeah, and I guess the second place fight that happened in Texas was Canelo Alvarez versus Billy Joe Saunders. That only generated nine million, hmm. so it's insane. Netflix said they had sixty million households watch the fight. Yep, like and that doesn't even mean like how many people actually saw it because uh, I was one of the unfortunate people that I couldn't watch. Well, I watched it live, but not through Netflix because it was buffering the entire time. So I was watching it through. Antonio Brown was at the fights and he was streaming it on the screen, like the big screen showing everybody at home. So I was one of, I think the 7.6 million people that were watching his stream, even though I had Netflix and it didn't fucking work. So that was a massive stress test for Netflix and they failed hardcore. <laughs> but again, are you expecting 
60 million people. No. I was going to guess. My guess was 50. I, w- I thought 50 million would watch it, but still, yeah. it's in fucking insane. I don't think anything has ever been watched by that many people combat sports wide ever. Like, it's fucking no, and, crazy. You know, I, I watched pretty much the whole thing. Um, I came in and out of the room a few times earlier on, but there was a you know a bunch of issues never mind this the streaming thing which they seem to have resolved by the time the main event rolled around that even the quality had gone away if you were connected it was it was better where, mm-hmm. but like early on they had um holyfield commentating uh, and his his uh, mic and his headset and his in here stuff wasn't working so like they were trying to talk to him you know how they have the typical like mm-hmm. four people kind of talking and like he couldn't hear anything. And it was like, I'm like, is he just like punch drunk or whatever? I couldn't tell what was going bit. on. And then I forgot who was next to him. Another box, Lennox Lewis, maybe. I don't yes, I think. It, yeah. yeah. Was sitting next to him and he was just translating what was, and Holyfield's like, what? And it's so loud, you know, I'm like, what the fuck? And it kept happening. Like you guys couldn't figure that out. And then they had yeah. another time where someone's mic went off too. Um, and they weren't sure what was going on at some point. Like the the broadcasters were not clear what was coming up next or who where it was like a weird Rosie Perez was commenting. Like, I don't know how she's involved with boxing, which I is, don't either. It makes sense. confusing. Soviets. Maranalo as annoying as ever, you know, with his high yeah. hyperboles and just That's fucking exactly. going off the rails. I had the whole family watching this, and the, the kids were like, What? what is he talking about? Don't worry about it. I don't know what the hell he's saying. It's yeah, it's just but yeah, I mean, outside of all of that, you know, oh, what do you got? I was going to say that this is uh, the experience of <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's going on. Yeah. That's pretty much, uh, we don't know what to do. So, yeah. Anyway. I mean, it, it was pretty bad and we had been texting in a chain and there was a, another buddy of ours, Brian, who was having trouble and I was fine. And then he was having trouble. And then for a while, mine froze. The way I fixed this, I got like five minutes behind the live broadcast on Netflix and I just mm-hmm. let it go. So I think it was playing a buffered version of it or something weird, but yeah, let's talk about this. fight. Did, did you yes. end up what getting to see the thing? Cause yeah, my- I, I saw it eventually. Cause I, I went back the next day and Netflix had it available. So uh, it's just, I think I think had a script. I I think they had, and the rumor around the, around this campfire is that there was a no KO contract clause where if if he went the whole distance, Tyson, he got twenty million, and then he got less and less as the fight was shorter and shorter. So yeah, that's. I think he it was like a. I want to say it was a four million dollar bonus if it went the distance, but yeah. you know, I've watched Jesus Christ, <clears throat> how, how many fights have I watched between boxing and MMA over? a lifetime i couldn't even tell you how many but this fight does not pass the fucking smell test at all at right. all because I, I mean i'll post some of the training footage i'll probably just overlay it in there but like mike in the training footage he's moving he's fast he's fucking hitting with ferocious power and then you look at this night he he's there's no movement. I mean, I think he maybe had a 30 second blast at the start of the fight. Uh, he's hardly throwing any punches. They say he threw a whopping 97 punches in eight rounds. So like, well, in a couple, there's some replays out there. If you look at them, you can see the technique is there and somehow he's hitting him in the, in the chest area instead of the chin on some, a couple, you know, how he has that patented hook move that under and over, mm-hmm. like he was missing a bunch of stuff where he went to hit him and, was like just outside of reach. And I'm thinking like, okay, like I, I think I think something's wonky here. And then Jake doesn't do anything like at the end. And it seemed like he was kind of just sparring. I think this was a big money grab. And I mean, it was, it could have been exciting. I still think Tyson would have KO'd him had they been actually fighting. I think the whole thing was fucking bullshit. So I think I think Tyson could have beat him. Technique wise, he looked way crisper in, in the way he was doing things, but just half speed. Like, I don't know. Yeah, but, and then like at some point he just is standing right in front of him, just taking punches. Yeah, Jake saying, you know, I want it to be respectful and not knock him out. And I'm like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, this is bullshit. This is not what he was advertising in the lead up to the fight, as far as the training footage that he put out. He did nothing of that. Now he was wearing a knee brace of some sort, so I don't know if he fucked his knee up the day before, because at the weigh-ins. 
he fucking slapped Jake because Jake stepped on his foot. Uh, Tyson was in socks and Jake had shoes on and he stepped on Tyson's foot and then Tyson just fucking Smacked cranked him. him and almost knocked him out with that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll probably post that in, but. Well, um, it's funny how Jake comes in with the car and everything else and fucking Tyson. It's just Tyson. It's by himself. Nobody else. It's just him. You know, walking into the K, uh, ring, I should say. Yeah. So I'm just looking back to the rest of the shit here. And then after the fight, Mike tweeted out, and this was crazy. He said, this is one of those situations where you lost, but still won. I'm grateful for last night. No regrets to get in the ring one last time. And he said, I almost died in June. I had eight blood transfusions, lost half my blood, and 25 pounds in the hospital. I had to fight to get healthy wow. to fight. So I won to have my children see me stand toe to toe and finish eight rounds with a talented fighter. I don't, I don't know about that. Half my age in front of a packed Dallas Cowboy Stadium is an experience that no man has the right to ask for. Thank you. So, well, he is also on death's door. You know, you don't take eight blood transfusions and lose 25 pounds in, I don't know handful of months ago and then come back yeah also true true so now i'm wondering if like that training footage was prior to all that could have been he's severely compromised because you're not gonna recover like to lose 25 pounds and then come back it's gonna take a while you're gonna be super fatigued yeah that makes sense i suppose but it still didn't look right i i i think we all got fucked (laughs) and I don't know what this was, but this was part of the broadcast too. Oh yeah. I totally forgot about that. What the hell? I saw that. I'm like, did he just show his ass on TV on purpose? What is going on here? I Netflix? Is that necessary? And no. like, who does it wear underwear? <laughs> like, I don't get that. If I'm fighting. I'm wearing fucking underwears. But he's got what that are... big ass cup on. So maybe. He yeah, but you. It's good enough. Well, I don't know. It's weird. Do we want to talk about the co-main event? Did you watch that? Uh, I saw a little bit of it. You can go ahead. I mean, that was exciting. Uh, Serrano versus Taylor. Those, man, they went at it. And I got to say, like, uh, Serrano, way more athletic, seemed like the better boxer. I think she outlanded, struck her by, like, 100-some strikes and landed. And somehow still loses the decision, even though Katie Taylor didn't do all that much during the fight. A lot of dirty boxing. People were bitching about that because she opened up this nasty gash on her eye with a headbutt. She was doing the like get in your grill mm-hmm. with their head, you know, kind of thing. But they went at it. They had some. That's a if you want to yeah, watch. It, that's a. Fun I don't fight. know if it was the seventh round. One of them. It was just like they're just beating the fuck out of each other. They like, were. They just went shit. at it. Shit. <laughs> but I thought that was a robbery. I don't think Katie Taylor won that one. So crazy. Well, it's boxing though, right? The fix is always in and box. Yeah, that's the thing I don't like about it. You don't, it just seems like it's always some fuckery. That's why I stopped watching the sport because I, I watched too many fights where it was clearly for one guy and the other guy ended up winning. And I mean, we, we've talked about this in the past. Like one of our boxing coaches, we went and then saw him fight and he clearly lost the fight and they clearly gave it to him. They clearly did. I was like, <laughs> like wow, he totally the... lost. I know what I'm watching. I know what got his lost. I want him to win. That was I weird. The next week in the gym, I was like, Hey coach, good fight. He's like, yeah, thanks man. I'm like, <laughs> I, <don't... laughs> I think you got your ass kicked, but okay. <laughs> Somehow you miraculously got the win. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. It's like, who do you know? And Mm-hmm. so it works um, that's all I have for that do you know why he was biting his else? glove by the way Tyson uh, probably because he wanted to knock him out but knew he was going to get 4 million dollars more so, so he's like telling glove. himself don't knock him out like, yeah knock don't him knock him out <laughs> like, ah, ah. You gotta be, play it safe Mike <laughs> fuck yeah that's tough and th- I think there was a betting thing that happened too so Darren Roval tweeted this out. He said, bet MGM says that Tyson Paul was its most bet combat sport fight between MMA and boxing in its history. The fight had three times the bets and four times the money versus any other combat fight in its history. Wow. He said 67% of the money 
was on Tyson. And I'll tell you this, Mike Tyson, that fight fucked up my parlay because I had Tyson, Jones, Oliveira, and Nickel as a fucking four fight parlay. I don't know wow. how much I would have paid off, but like a bazillion dollars? Probably two bucks. <laughs> I don't know. Bet twenty five. I think it would have paid two hundred something. Okay. Which is that's nice. Anyway, anyway, uh, do a little more sponsor action. Ah, uh, for sure. Hold on. Brought to you by. Let's see, Chubbies. Hey, fellas, are you spending the holidays with your new partner's family and want to make good impression? Well, you can make a great first impression with Chubbies. Chubbies is a perfect for nailing that holiday look while keeping things relaxed and fun. From family dinners to holiday parties, Chubby's has you covered, so you can focus on being yourself and letting the good vibes roll. Chubby's is home of the ultra-cozy comfort clothes that'll keep you feeling warm and looking better as the weather gets progressively worse and worse. From their flannels to their warm pullovers to their cozy quarter zips, Chubby's has all the fall-ready threads for that outdoor football game, pumpkin patch adventure, or a weekend bonfire. This holiday season, elevate your style and those around you with Chubby's. Chubby's is also a fantastic gift for someone else if you're stumped on what to get someone. For a limited time, Chubby's is giving our listeners and viewers 20% off your order with their exclusive code uh, MMA20. Use the code MMA20 at Chubby's, Chubby's Shorts.com. That's right. And I've been wearing one of their hoodies. It's pretty super comfortable, warm. Love it. Yeah. Check amazing. out their website for the, uh, their best deals of the year, folks. For a limited time, our friends at Chubby's are giving listeners 20% off with the promo code MMA20 at checkout at chubbyshorts.com. That's 20% off your order with promo code MMA20. Support our show and tell them we sent you this holiday season. Gift yourself and your loved ones, Chubby's. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Drift Air Freshener. Drift started as a solution to better scent. Each product is designed to fit seamlessly into your space while bringing you the freshest, real scents possible. Free from harsh chemicals found in traditional air fresheners like phthalates, parabens, we oh, well. <laughs> they only use the good stuff, natural essential and fragrance oils, and more sustainable materials to bring you your best looking, best smelling air freshener yet. Looks good, smells good all good that's right and they just came out with the new scent holiday spice here we oh, go yeah. let's crack this open see what we got uh-oh holiday spice Ooh. Ooh. that's super refreshing smells like orange maybe a little cinnamon nutmeg I'm not sure what else let's see what they say see how close i was festive and cheerful there's always a sense of merriment in the air during the holidays as warm spices like clove and toasted cinnamon mix and mingle. Spiced orange adds a lively twist, dancing with a hint of fir balsam to create Ooh. an aroma that's at once joyful and comforting. We have a special deal for our listeners. You can save 20% off with code MAT20 at drift.co slash MMA nuts. That's 20% off with code MAT20 at drift.co slash MMA nuts. Nice. Just like that. Back to the show. Back UFC to the show. 309, Ingo. Oh, what boy. do you think the pay-per-view buy rate would be? For 309? Yeah. We're never going to find out. I don't know if New York's going to release that, but no I'm one gonna, releases I'm going to say anymore. three. F no. Yeah, 350. I'd say I, I'm right around there. I'd say 350, maybe 400. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a, a, as much as people think. Yeah, I mean, it's two good fights and then whatever else happens on the card. Right. But one of the weird thing was they, they switched back to the old gloves. And they yes. said now they're phasing out the new ones. And I don't know if it's because John Jones was saying that the new ones were uncomfortable or if the UFC was listening. I think we talked about it last week or a couple weeks ago of all the data that was out there of the lack of KOs with the new gloves. Yes. So they're going to just start slowly phasing those out. I think they're going to start with, because the, the problem is they don't have enough supply to use all the old ones going forward. So it's going to be, I think, numbered cards, get all the old gloves until they can build up stock and inventory, and then they'll phase them all out. So That makes sense. 
kind of failed and re reignited. I don't know, kind of weird. And then as far as like this card, it was kind of crazy. You almost had the Avengers crew at the event, right? You had Trump, Elon Musk, RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard, Kid Rock, like all sorts of fucking shit oh, yeah. going on. And yeah, it wasn't um, Trump and Elon Musk and Kid Rock together? I think they were sitting. Kid yeah, Rock I think all sitting. of them were kind of yeah. congregated yeah. together and Trump giving Rogan a nice big hug for you know, oh, yeah. all the support. It's like, hey, thanks for that. Thanks yes. for your help, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was huge. That was well, cute. even just, just being on the podcast, like that was a smart way to get to the people, do all the podcasting. For sure. So, good to see uh let's start with the main event you had john jones versus steve miocic john was what 237.6 pounds steve yeah, 248.6 so steve looked in really great shape i thought like amazingly best shape i think he's ever been in from what i remember so yeah he, he looked in great shape but it's john right well, John Jones. yeah, John like st- looked like his old two hundred five self. He was like exciting, mixing it up, coming at you from all angles, throwing mm-hmm. weird shit. You know, looked way faster than Stipe, who was stiff and slow and prodding and didn't seem like he knew what to do. You know, and then he got taken down in the first round with a nice little sweep. That was beautiful. And I think I'll after that, down. Stipe was super hesitant to do anything. And well, just... and then John was raining all the elbows, but he didn't even throw the fucking twelve six. No, I'm like he's he, like. This is, I wanted first round 12 sick elbow. It was right there. It was right there. <laughs> like, what it. are you doing? Yeah. Because I almost bet that too. Like first round KO by John. Did Be not. a 12 six elbow? That was like, a I would have put that in too. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, just, he just got manhandled this whole fight. Like it was not competitive. He, yeah. No. Stipe maybe landed a couple strikes, but again, John is just too fucking good. His fight IQ is too high. He adjusts on the fly. And then what was it? The third round where he throws that spinning fucking kick right to the fucking midsection. Yeah. Which and, he, thought, he, he thought was a liver shot, but it wasn't. Yeah. No, so <laughs> broke. It's like, no, it was the other side. Because he went down like it was a liver shot. Like, Yeah. I mean, it, it looked like he broke, his, heel. Rib, broke yeah. his rib. It was straight For heel. Sure. Um, beautiful shot. And he was just piecing up Stipe from the outside. Like just, I mean, it just, I don't think Stipe had a chance. He never did in my no. book. <laughs> I think you picked Jones to win too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then Stipe retires. I mean, understandably so. Right. Which makes sense. I mean, I think he's happier just being a firefighter. Uh, John, it's weird because John really wants to fight Alex Pereira for that BMF title. The UFC and Dana White is smart, and Dana is going, "Yeah, no, uh, we don't want him to fight Alex because uh, he doesn't want to tarnish Alex because he knows John will probably beat him. Like the right. odds are high, so he was more interested in making John fight Aspinall because." Here we go again. Guy that wants to retire. Here's the up and comer. We kind of mm-hmm. want the the legend in the sport to lose the up and comer, so we can just feed the cycle. And John's like, no, <laughs> it's you're gonna pay me fuck you money to fight Aspinall, mm-hmm. or you're gonna let me fight Pereira, or I'm just gonna fucking retire. Like if you're gonna force me to fight Aspinall, I'm done. I'm out retiring so yeah what do you think is going to happen there with john well he wants to fight Pereira, right and i don't know dana said there's no way that's going to happen so i unless these he did say unless they start drawing at each other and really want to make it happen but i don't don't want them to do that so i you never know dana's like trying to it's yeah you know but i i think what else makes sense i don't do not think he's going to fight aspinall I don't think that's going to happen. It's too risky like to fight the younger guy because if you lose, I see where John's coming from. It tarnishes his reputation. If he loses to Pereira, Pereira is is he's got status. He's been a champion. He's fucking beat a lot of good people. Yeah. Espinal has not. So and again, I say it, I like John's chances against Pereira more than I like against Espinal. I think Aspinall's you gotta give it to him, I, and I'd like to see it. I think it would be epic. I, I, Fuck yeah! 
you might actually see John Jones get KO'd for the first time. You could. I don't see it happening, but it's a possibility because Guerrero's got crazy power. Crazy power. Yes. Crazy power. He's got retarded power in his hands. Yes. You can't say that word. Or can you? Maybe you can. Oh, retarded and <laughs> I can say whatever I want. I don't think you can say that. <laughs> oh, I don't think you can say it like that. <laughs> but oh, who's the other fight? Oh, John was saying he's he just wants super fights. He said, I'm I'm open to fight Derek Lewis even. Like, fuck yeah. yeah, why not? Like, let John dictate whatever. Like, hasn't he earned it? I think he has. You gotta give it to him. Let yeah. him let him decide what happens. Yeah. Let's not make it two more years, you know. Let's get him in the cage exactly by, by like, February or something, you know. Strike while the iron's hot. Or Seems like he's like in that. good shape. Yeah, it, it, he's like a spelt two thirty six. So I think his he finally found the right weight to operate at because I think that yeah. was wasn't Kane right around there two thirty five two forty. Yes, he's just like you're you're right in between the max and minimum. You're in a good zone. I think 230, 235 is the right weight for like a legit heavyweight. Yeah. Although I do like, I wish there was no weight class again, or at least nice. no top end on the heavyweight. Right. Yeah. Because I want freak show. And then what about this Oliveira Chandler 2 fight? What happened here? I don't know what the hell was going on with Chandler. I, I just feel like Oliveira, just all smothering type grappling. Mm. Just, I mean, it was like a clinic and just smothering, <laughs> really <laughs> negating any sort of opportunity Chandler might have had to <laughs> and, do any, yeah, anything. And the, the takedowns he was doing, like, oh, look at fucking Oliveira going for it. Yeah. And then a lot of, you know, I, I was looking back at some of the comments about Chandler and like how how much of a dirty fighter he is. I was like, holy shit, I didn't realize that because even in that, remember back in like the Poye fight, he fish hooked him. Yes, and uh, and then in this fight, there were eye pokes, fence grabs, back of the head. Like Keith Peterson, what fucking fight are you watching? Like I'll allow a hundred and two illegal strikes to the back of the head, but not a hundred and three. Is that the <laughs> line? Like what what's the fucking line? Yeah, it was unbelievable. He didn't give a shit, and that was in the fifth round. So it's like the first four rounds, 100% Oliveira. Fifth round, arguably, should be Chandler's because he he fucking drops him again. Yeah, in the fifth round, like the first fight he did. And 49, then at, 49 46 or 48 46, right? What we should I, don't, I don't look at the scores. Yeah, and then like the last whatever 20 seconds were. Olivera's on Chandler's back. Ch Chandler stands up. It's like, fuck it. I'm going to dump him for a loss. And boom. Yeah. And hoist him up again and fucking drops him off again. So he's a crowd pleaser. That's for sure. I think he went berserker in that fifth round and go. He did. He got really mad. <laughs> berserker. This sucks. <laughs> Give it to me. Would you berserker. like to ticking fuck berserker? Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Like a ticking fuck berserker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, What's that from? That movie in a long time. Uh, Which Clerks? movie? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's been a long Old school. time. I don't know if it holds up, but at the time, I, I don't know, it. man. It was it's in black and white too, shot in black and white, purposely. Yeah, cinematically, respectfully, and all that shit. So yeah, so Oliveira with the win. Yep. And then what else? We had Jim Miller. Got a submission, right? Yeah, he jumped the gilly, got the submission yeah. win, and now he he owns two records, so he has the most. I'll just pull this up and share because you want to see the other people on here. So, total fights, Jim Miller, UFC, forty five. <laughs> Jesus, Andre Arlovski, forty two, wow. and then wins Jim Miller, twenty seven, Arlovski, twenty three, and it's it kind of goes in order, like Arlovski, Cerrone. And then wins. Arlovsky, Cerrone are tied and finishes fucking Charles Oliveira. I like looking at this other shit. Derek Lewis, 15. Yeah. Submission wins, Oliveira. Neil Magny's got most decision wins. Wow. That's why you don't want to watch him fight ever. If you're on that list, you don't want to watch him fight ever. Look at GSP's on there, too. Huh. Win streak. There you go. Anderson Silva, 16. And then title fight wins. 
John Jones at 16, GSP at 13. I don't know who number that's three crazy. is. Or four, Anderson Silva, 11. Yeah. I mean, that's something to be said about someone when you want to talk about the greatest of all time and who's in that conversation. It, it's John and yeah, I guess you got to throw GSP in when you look at that. Because it, it, I don't know how many people have said this. It's easier to get the title than it is to fucking defend the title. Yeah, because everybody's gunning for you. Yeah. So to defend it that many times is impressive. Because you're always and, fighting the best. Yes. And the people that are hungry. And John only needs one more, what, win at heavyweight to, or consecutive win at heavyweight to tie the title. Because I think Stipe had three. There's only, like, heavyweight, the, the title turns over so many times. You only yeah. defend it twice, and then you typically lose. So yeah. that third one is very hard to get. Because mm-hmm. heavyweight is chaos city, usually. <laughs> Absolutely. You make one mistake, and you go to fucking sleep. So. Uh, that's all I had for UFC 309, unless you have anything else for no, said I'm good. card. I know Bo Nickel won a very boring ass fucking fight, put me to sleep during it, and I woke up right before the uh, Oliveira <laughs> fight. <so. laughs> uh, the, well, I'm wondering, think too bad for Weidman. Uh, his opponent, yeah, yeah. Uh, Eric Anders off the card because of a, some sort of a medical issue, and re- I, I felt bad because he was ready, super yeah. disappointed. Hometown, you know, mm-hmm. kind of would have been nice, but hey. Shit happens. No, he says. Um, I want to talk about this Chicago Sports Network real quick. Please. So the Chicago Sports Network is the person that has the broadcasting rights to the Blackhawks, the Bulls, and the White Sox. So yes, they have been unable to come to an agreement with Comcast. So I know I don't know how many games the Blackhawks into their well into their season the bulls just started their season and now they've decided the chicago sports network has decided we're going to start our own streaming service so they launched their own streaming service they're charging 19.99 a month for one team of those three or what? 30 dollars a month for all three so w- what are your thoughts on that uh seriously <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh you gotta be <laughs> kidding me like i can't watch Sox games anymore or hawks or bulls and it's not like these are really good teams that are going into the playoffs and they have a potential to win things i don't know like i know the Sox are shit the Terrible. blackhawks are shit i'm Worst assuming the history. bulls are shit yeah and bulls you're are... gonna try to charge okay. people yeah, they're just okay. The Bulls. I, I don't know. I don't see how this works, and I'm not paying for it. Is there no other way to watch it? I thought you well, said something I mean, about Fubo or whatever. Yeah, and allegedly you you may be able to use a VPN and watch it through ESPN Plus, but I've been unsuccessful trying said method. Although, again, I don't wait that long because I see the buffering, and once I see the buffering ring, I'm out. Yeah. I ain't got time. But you know what this tells me? This tells me the ownership does not give a fuck about the fans. And this is reminiscent of the early days. This would have been like the 90s, watching the Blackhawks or trying to watch the Blackhawks. Yeah, They, they used to not televise the home games because the owner thought that if he did that, people would not buy tickets to come see them play. So this is what's bringing it all back to home is that they don't give a fuck about the fans. How are you going to gain new fans if you're not going to show the product? Granted, it's not the best product in the world right now, but you can't charge a premium on top of like all this other shit that's going on. So you have Netflix, ESPN Plus, name all your other fucking stream, Disney and fucking 18 other, and then you're going to try to charge 20 bucks for this. Like you should be paying people to watch your fucking games. Cause yeah. this, this is a goddamn Trash. travesty. Trash. So you know what they can do? Suck a dick. Uh, go fuck yourselves oh. <laughs> and, and <laughs> suck a dick. While you're at it. <laughs> suck a dick and go fuck yourself. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's it's stupid. So egregious. So egregious. it's not going to work. I don't see it working. No, not at all. It's Comcast or go fuck yourself. Does Reinsdorf also own the uh, Hawks? 
No, but they're all in concert. So that network is owned by Reinsdorf and the Wirtz family who owns the Blackhawks. So they're co-owners of this uh, new Chicago sports network. Wow. So they're just fucking fans over, basically. Yeah. I mean, maybe if they collect all the Chicago teams, it might make sense. Broadcast every Chicago team all the time, all day. Yeah, I, no one's going to pay. No. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, enjoy I'm, your five subscribers. I'll watch the replay on ESPN if they do anything yeah. cool. <laughs> well, it's not like, again, they're not good, so there's no reason to buy anything. And even if they were good, I'm not paying fuck another $20 a month for – nonsense like fuck off it's either free or i don't watch so might as well throw the bears in there <laughs> might, might, might as well. and then i have another reason not to watch another fucking chicago team yeah that's why i sh- swear off chicago sports I'm, I'm gonna start picking new teams and go trying to figure out I was, I was watching uh the chargers game the other day i was like hmm maybe i need to be a chargers fan how about the lions they're pretty good this year i, I can't do it i can't do interplay teams so no Lions, no Packers. I, maybe I could do the Vikings. I used to like the Vikings a little bit. I like the purple. So, okay, let's see. Hockey, I don't I don't know who to root for. I kind of like Tampa Bay, but they got too good. I don't know. We'll see. What else is happening? Well, I don't have a whole lot this week, but I got this. There we go. Oh, no. It's time. <laughs> okay. Sundays. Fun days and Mondays. Today's Monday. Yeah. Monday's yes. UFC in five game where we play UFC in five. Okay. We have Matt a clue. He guesses. And then we see how long it takes him to get the right answer based on these clues. All right. Clue number one. Are you ready? Always. Heavyweight. Brock Lesnar. Nope. Yeah, UFC I'm not going to Hall- get it again right off the bat. <laughs> UFC Hall of Famer. Again. Ooh. Did they throw Randy Couture in there? I don't know. Yeah. You want me to put that? Yeah, go go ahead. Okay. That was gonna be my that was my thought too. Let's see. Nope. First UFC heavyweight champ. Ooh. First UFC heavyweight champ. Heavyweight champ. See, I see the problem is I don't know when they started doing weight classes. Because mm-hmm. I know Bass Rutten was in there as a heavyweight and he was a champion, but that would be a very obscure person to have as your first UFC champ. First you and he's not he wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame in the UFC. Fuck. Arlovsky, Tim Sylvia. I'm trying to think of all the, like the old school. And w- did they put Arlovsky in? Because he's been f- he's still fucking fighting for them, for fuck's sake. I'll just go Arlovsky to fucking get this okay. moving. Arlovsky, here we go. Nope. Pride, Pride Grand Prix champion. Pride Grand Prix champion. Jesus Christ. What is that? Uh, big nog good luck on trying to type his name in <laughs> uh, is that what is that what you're thinking yeah i mean i, I don't know so i didn't watch that much pride so i don't know rodrigo who, who or rogerio rodrigo right rodrigo yeah nope the hammer oh mark coleman that that's not even fair you tell me the nickname yeah, first UFC Marco. heavyweight Marco. champion. Yeah, see, I wasn't even going that old. That's pretty old. That's back there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we got it under at least at the limit. Isn't five the max? You get yeah, it? you made it. Okay. Whew. These are tough. At least they're going old school. I can appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Did you see Nick Diaz is actually out of his fight against Vincente Luque? Shocking. Three times. Yeah, I right? think something is going on over there. <laughs> yeah, the meth. <laughs> like the guy that was the last week, he's out there lighting grass on fire. We're going, what the fuck is he doing? I don't know what's going on upstairs. All I hear is like creaking floors in my kitchen. Creak, creak, really? creak. Yes. 
He's probably not burglars. supposed to be. They're gonna walk in on burglarize the show live. Oh, on good luck on that. That'll be great. Yeah, we'll watch Matt beat ass right on the show. Well, you're gonna hear it because I'm gonna be going that way. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and it's always like, do, do you do it with hands? Do you do it with weapons? There's all sorts of shit in this house. All of the above. Yeah, depends what the scenario is. But anyway, yeah. I saw a really good post-fight celebration. Let's pull this one up. We'll go no volume. This might be the best celebration ever. A oh, shit. Do- what oh, a little dog giving him a high five. Bam. <laughs> That's I didn't know epic. you can bring your uh, service dog in the fucking octomagons. And then I got some tweet of the weeks. I got to pull Let's up. See. I got four of these. Let me pull them all up. But So when I go into it, they'll all be there. Hopefully they're not auto playing. Okay, so first we'll start with this one. This is Rand Paul, congressman, tweeting this out. He said, here's another one for Doge, Elon Musk. Apparently, the National Institutes of Health spent over $3 million to watch hamsters fight on steroids. <laughs> what the hell? Why Why don't we get them all jacked up and give them, like, fucking big testicles, a little cocaine some other shit. Those poor hamsters. They're always getting the shit under the stick. I know, right? You don't want to yeah. be a test subject. That's what they're giving you. So that was one. Then you have Jake Paul has more wins at AT&T Stadium this year than the Cowboys. He's got one. Cowboys have zero. I think they're actually playing right now. So I don't know if it's a home game, but uh, that's fucking pathetic. And then this was from the fights. This is the cut you were talking about. Yeah, Katie said, Taylor, yeah. Wow, I hope that nasty. cut can heal up nicely. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> and then how ass is the Bears O lining? <laughs> can you next ass. go back to the other one for a second? I gotta unsee this. Uh which one? This one? Okay, that's better. Phew. I, I got another palette cleanser. Cleanse I'll, the I'll palette, follow. please. I'll follow. We'll go to a little pillow fighting. The professional pillow fighting league. Here you go. No sound. We'll give you a little whirl dural. Whirling dervish, you know. Nice. So weird technique. They're walking forward, elbow up, fist up. I, I like that spinning shit in the pillow league. Yeah. I feel like you should put rocks in there. Oh geez. <laughs> what do they do in the military? Is it a bar of soap in the bar sock? Yeah. yeah. They need something. I think, but I think it's just a pillow case, is what it is. Yeah, yeah. No pillow. Anyway, you get the gist. Pellet clan, palette cleanse. Thank you. That's that's very nice of you. Appreciate that. And then I, I just have knowledge left, and I don't even have that much. Unless you got some other stuff. Uh I got this. Um I'll just leave you with this real fast. Sure. Um, you remember Jamal Hill? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is Jamal Hill's mother right here, apparently. And uh, she gets into a little thing with a guy, and Jamal Hill says, uh, no. Oh, sure. I've seen this. I didn't know that was Jamal. Uh, according to the caption, it is him. <laughs> but get, well, I mean, the way that guy f- threw his punch, he fucking knew the other guy was going to punch. Yep. His reaction time was on point. Like, holy shit. Yeah, he went right for it. Yeah. So, so I will buy I will buy it. Uh, what do you have for knowledge? I just have this. Uh, I thought I'd save it. They had at at the Tyson Hall fight, mm-hmm. they had a replica of this dude. Oh, nice. And you could hit him. Oh, Jake that's Paul's fucking head. cool as shit. Can you imagine having a replica of your head that people could punch? Well, it's better to punch than someone to shove their cock in your mouth. That would be epic. You set that up in the family in the family room. Be like, you guys pissed at me? Right there. Yeah, go, <laughs> go ahead, ahead. Fucking tee off on me. That one looks crazy. super realistic. Yeah, it does. So I like it. And then I'll share this. Here's the last person to be knocked out by Mike Tyson. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not retarded. Retard? A retard. Yes. Anyway, that note was shut down. You're not done. Alrighty. Well, that's been this week's edition of MMA Notes. My name's Ingo Weigel. Matt Griffith. Thanks for playing.